Well, I have to thank my fabulous co-chairs for making all those phone calls, for having all of you wonderful friends, family, and colleagues um, of MOAD. And I am honored to be the executive director of this museum and move MOAD to that next journey. Um, as we were talking about staff, there is one staff member that I would like to recognize. And this person was a spark of energy, a spark of light um, at our museum. Um, her name, Jocelyn Joy McKay Crumpton. And she passed away. She passed away last month, and she was a super volunteer that was the um, former re retired associate professor at UCLA, and unbeknownst to us, um, an incredible um, educator. And she joined our education team, and she took us to a place that we just would not have gone to, impressing people like the Haas Foundation and other foundations to support our MOAD in the classroom. And so instead of a, a moment of silence, we would call uh, Joy, Miss Joy. And she thought I worked the uh, team so hard. She said, Linda, we, we need to have some yoga classes here so, so we can all calm down and wear three and four hats, uh, making Moad wonderful. And so I'd like you all to raise your glasses and let's say cheers to Joy. So as I, um, thank you, as I think about um, our staff, and I do want to give another shout out uh, to our staff uh, for not only helping to do the extra work of putting on this exhibition, uh, put, this is an exhibition, isn't it? <laughs> uh, putting on our um, Afropolitan Ball, but also all of the work that they do for the museum. I'm reminded of, um, this must have been about 15, 20 years ago, that I'm sitting at the um, Legion of Honor in their theater, one of the fine arts museums here in San Francisco. And I'm sitting, um, listening to a lecture, and I'm trying to figure out how to grasp uh, the Americas. And there's a woman who's sitting next to me, and she says, don't worry. Um, I've been doing this for about 30 years. And she was one of those super volunteers at the Legion that would come every day for 35 years to talk about tapestries. And that kind of commitment, I find, is what is driving me to show up and my staff every day for MOAD. And that woman, her name was Virginia K. Anderson, and she turned out to be my mother-in-law. So you have to uh, know that sometimes mother-in-laws are quite wonderful people. <laughs> and this kind of commitment is what has driven MOAD um, when I find myself uh, being the visionary leader for the museum. And I look at those things that we've uh, done that we said with MOAD 2.0 that we would change the culture. We would change how people perceived not only us as a museum, but our professional development, the professionals that work in the museum, and we would work every day, 365, on changing the canon of that world called black art and culture. And I shared with uh, folks a year ago that um, this is a black museum about the black uh, diaspora, the content um, developed by artists who are from the diaspora, but we are an American museum for everyone. And so with that type of, of focus and our, um, our drive to present to you the best in class of traditional artists as well as new artists, I am delighted to share with you that when we said we were going to be provocative in MOAD 2.0, um, we were just that. Um, Art Forum Magazine in 2016 announced our exhibition with Toyin Ojin Odutula as one of the top 10 exhibitions of the year. She is now, two weeks ago, showing at the Whitney. Um, we also, uh, last year, um, Lava Thomas, who was one of the artists 
who we opened. Some of you will remember that we opened the museum, um, uh, reopened the museum a few years ago with Lava Thomas Beyond, and now our very own Lava Thomas showing her work at the Smithsonian American Art Museum just this past summer, and they purchased her piece. I, you know, it's a... <laughs> um, and um, we followed that up with Kenyatta Hinkle, who um, created her exhibition here at the museum, and she created that place called Kentrifica, Kentucky, and Africa, and here Kenyatta's work just recently at the California African American Museum, and the New York Times had to dedicate almost a full page to um, how wonderful this emerging artist who is now a rising star. She's beyond just being an emerging artist and she was here at MOAD. It is these types of exhibitions as, as well as us um, launching the Emerging Artist Program and with that Emerging Artist Program we've had over 120 artists come and apply to be part of the Emerging Artists Experience, of which our competition, we have chosen six out of those. And we will be expanding that, because we really want to not just be provocative, but we want to be intentional. It is our mission to serve to you this diversity in art. In addition, we are doing over 77 programs, public programs, and one of our signature programs is that of the chef in residence, which you will find out a little more about that um, later today, with uh, later this evening with uh, Chef Brian Terry. And we are very proud that in our education program, the former mayor, Willie Brown, mentioned our connection and our affiliation with the Smithsonian. The Smithsonian is awarding us um, the honor based on one of our new signature programs, which is Will to Adorn, where we are taking high school students and teaching them curatorial practices in a digital environment. And so for this and our approach to it, the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. is coming to honor us. And we... <clears throat> we... We said to you that we would also be vibrant and that we would be urban, and so we want you to know that the impact of our education program, we're impacting over 6,000 students, and at least 1,000 of those students, we go to their classroom, we take MOAD into the classroom, and then we teach their teachers over 32 classes that we have impacted professional development for those students, for those teachers. And so all of this is the community. And so we want to share with you, we're more than just the museum, we're your museum. And if you look around and people ask me, what are the people like who come to the museum? So I want you to um, repeat after me. I, I am, am the, diaspora. the diaspora. You are the people that come to the museum. We are one of the most diverse, expanded audiences here in San Francisco. And this is why it's important for us to be a part of San Francisco and keep black art and culture in this beautiful city. That's a sanctuary city. That's a healing city. And we realize that it's not just enough for us to be um, very good at turning the organization around and presenting to you MOAD 2.0, but in MOAD 3.0, we are looking at collaborative partnerships with other very important organizations, and one of them is my brother on the other side of the bay, the maestro of the Oakland Symphony, Mr. Michael Morgan, we will be developing a partnership together to expand both our audiences because we know that you do not just look at art on the wall, you listen to music, you look at performance, and we want to bring all of that together. And when we really grow up, MOAD 3.0, our financial stability will be very much tied to different new concepts like maybe Marrying a university, I don't know. There might be a university president in the audience. But we want you to know that we are here and we will be here and much 
like my mother-in-law for 35 years, no one had to tell her to get up and travel from Berkeley to the Fine Arts Museum, to the Legion in particular, and deliver her message about tapestries. I want us to be that museum that's here 35 years from now and delivering to you the community of the diaspora. Thank you.